Welcome to the 55 Plus Travelers Arriving and Thriving Audio Conference, brought to you by Sensory Friendly Solutions. I'm your host, Sophie Yang. In this episode, you will also hear the voices of co-host Christopher Basmajan, my fellow occupational therapy student, as well as Sensory Friendly Solutions founder and CEO, Crystal Seberger. Our guest today is Laura Caswell, Director of Education at Neptune Theater since 2017. Neptune Theatre is located in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, and has operated for over 58 years. In this episode, Laura will share key insights into offering relaxed performances. Laura, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hello. My name is Laura Caswell. She, her, I'm here in Mi'kmaq, uh, which is Halifax, Nova Scotia. That was the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people, Chibuktuk. And I'm very happy to be here talking with you. I work for the Neptune Theatre, which is downtown Halifax on Argyle Street. It's great to have you here, Laura. Thank Can you tell you. us a little bit about Neptune Theatre? Neptune Theatre has been around. We're just about to have our 60th anniversary. It's a regional theatre in Canada back 60, obviously, years ago. The uh, government got together and realized they needed to implement regional theaters across the country. And this theater was one of them, and it was one of the first. What that means is we produce multiple productions every year in musicals, in plays, concerts, cabarets. Uh, obviously, in COVID times, that came to a little bit of a, uh, a pause. But um, I'm also in charge here at the Neptune Theater of the theater school, the school tour, YPCO, which is our youth performance company, relaxed performances, and some other outreach initiatives that we have here at the theater. That sounds very interesting. Can you <laughs> share with us a little bit more in detail about the programs and classes you offer? Totally. So this is my, I'm in my fourth year in this position. And I think the theater school itself in that it has about th over 37, 38 years old. And traditionally, we offer summer classes, summer camps, and uh, seasonal classes, winter classes, fall classes, spring classes on weekends. Those are more recreational style. We have implemented some uh, drop-in classes such as dance and, and improvisation. Um, we have gotten more into offering improv for adults um, and some other sort of intensive for adult scene study, self-tapes, those kind of things. Our teen programs or our pre-professional programs are aimed at young, young teens or young adults. Many of those are just, we work on productions with our YPCO, TD YPCO program, youth performance company, and our prep program, which is preparing students to audition for theater schools across the country. That's unique because here in Nova Scotia, there's not an arts high school per se anywhere. So we need to sort of help our students get up to, I'll just use the term up to snuff with some of the provinces like Ontario or Alberta or Winnipeg or, you know, uh, sorry, Manitoba, pardon me. And, and so it's just a chance to uh, inform them on what it means to audition for a post-secondary institution. And so those are like our classes. Again, the theater school department, the education department here also has works on, uh, you know, accessibility such as relaxed performances, trainings. We've just implemented through the help of Mental Health Nova Scotia, we're announcing some improv for anxiety classes, which we're going to begin this summer and run till the holidays. And those will be free to community members. And we're really excited about that. One thing that I'm sure we'll talk about today is combining our youth, some professional artists, and implementing songs and stories with seniors, which will be little presentations, we think, live in like courtyards at some of the seniors' residences is how we're going to start that program. Um, we're pretty excited about that. Can you tell us a little bit more about the plans for that kind of senior event? Yes, I can. So I, again, I've been in my position for four years and I've been wanting to implement performance aimed at senior audiences and specifically those seniors who might not be able to come to the theater anymore. For a bit of backstory, personally, I've worked a lot with Smile Theater, which is a company out of Toronto. They're an amazing company. They've been around for 35 plus years and Themselves. And they, that company was built with the sort of TYA, the Theatre for Young Audience model, same as schools. The reason that 
people do tours to schools is because not every school can come to you to see a show. So the idea behind Smile Theater was to bring small productions, you know, a couple of flats, a couple of chairs, a few speakers to residences so that you could bring the joy of live theater to everyone. And so I did a show with them a few times, one that I developed called Becoming Carol, which is about Carol Burnett, (laughs) who I was a performer and I wrote the show and collaborated on creating and putting that together. I got to do it probably about 150 times. That was for seniors audiences across Ontario. Most of those were private residences. I think we did one or two sort of public performances. And it was just such an incredible experience that as soon as I got my job here and one of my roles was to be in charge of our school tour, I started to think about the fact that we could expand that programming and how could we bring that experience to more audiences. I had some ideas in the works, a cut to COVID-19. But with that has come some gifts because... We've now understood how we can do things on Zoom and work collaboratively that way and still initiate dialogues. And so we started to brainstorm here how we could do something like that. Smile has started doing something in the past few years and with COVID that they call Smile Serenades. So instead of a big show, it's more of a one-on-one or two-on-five mini show and conversation with people. And so I kind of took that idea and applied and got, and I'm so grateful, Mental Health Nova Scotia is also helping us bring this experience to people. So it's in the works, like we're going to launch in August with our first residence, just as sort of our pilot. We will be coaching young adults, the young students from our TDYP Co company. Some artists are going to coach them. They're going to put together a mini show with like fun themes like welcome to the 60s or something like that and uh, then they're gonna have this interaction with safely socially distance all of that with these seniors and present this little show have a couple bit of dialogue and bring some joy and conversation to their day that was a long-winded answer but i just wanted to tell you all the steps that have gone into bringing this forward earlier you were mentioning that you had some uh, relaxed performances and you worked together with the nova scotia mental health group to organize anxiety reducing yeah it's called improv for anxiety we started that Mm -hmm. program before COVID 19 it's all a blur i'm sure you all understand an artist named bill wood who's local and i uh, in well he did the curriculum and the teaching but inspired by some programs that have happened at second city in toronto we thought we'd start to try and bring that here improv for anxiety is sort of implementing the ideas behind improv and spontaneity and thinking on the spot and those things that might normally increase your anxiety and using them as tools to battle your anxiety and Mm -hmm. and find uh, coping strategies so you mentioned improv for anxiety you mentioned those relaxed performances are there any other accessibility type changes that you've made or other options that you have at your disposal like in terms of your performances well uh, one thing for the seniors that i forgot to mention earlier is something else that we did it's this isn't exactly uh, accessibility and sort of the standard uh, definition but we initiated coffee and conversations for some of our sunday matinees and that was aimed at some of our seniors who come to the theater many of our subscribers are you know entering the senior zone <laughs> if you will some of them have lost their partners or the people they used to come to the theater with so it was a way of engaging those people and so they could come to the show and afterwards have a little bit of a coffee and talk with people about their experience so that was something that neptune's been offering again prior to COVID 19 but we're hoping to bring something like that back as far as uh, accessibility we've also done asl performances we're continuing to work to make our digital content and our social media as accessible as possible though it is still we're still in the process if you go check it out we know we're still working on it same as our website there's also lots of talks within house about general work wellness from an employee standpoint and accommodations and those things moving forward and how we can make this a a safe workplace for everyone and an inclusive workspace putting that into some of our hiring i do have someone working for me this summer at my camps someone who is a cp and an amazing person but who maybe traditionally might not get to have had the chance to work for us so yeah, stepping stones, but we, we're, we're, we're trying to do the work. We took a look at your website and uh, we saw other accessibility options that you guys offer, like wheelchair seating, mm-hmm. hearing assistive devices, and a- something called the Access 2 program. Could you talk about those? Yeah, the wheelchair seating, yes. The audio 
I'm going to just say right now, I think that's something that we need to keep working on. And the um, the final one is bringing a, a helper a, a, with you. There is no charge for that extra seat. Mm-hmm. So we want to make sure that everyone can come to the theater and that if the price of a, a second ticket was a barrier, that that wouldn't be the case. And we definitely noticed those being used at the relaxed performances and perhaps more than, than other shows when we were doing those. But I know personally, we're interested in doing um, audio description and things like that down the line. It might not be in this current 2021-22 season, but it is something on our radar that we want to work towards as well. I feel like hearing you speak about all of those examples, Neptune Theatre really takes into consideration to like be inclusive to everyone so that everyone can enjoy those shows and like attend those classes. Can you name some barriers that might make it difficult to keep that accessibility to everyone it's kind of a two-in-one is funding money in the budget again especially after the hard hit of no direct ticket revenues of for almost two years and with that um, the personnel and and support to make these things happen to make them happen properly to be able to hire the proper consultants to make sure that we're doing it properly and therefore the time. I think the biggest challenge in theater in general, um, and I know many companies are making strides, is to make these things And I'm not saying that we don't do that here at Neptune sometimes too. What I'm trying to say is making things not an afterthought. How are these things part of the programming? Especially one more time when we're trying to reinvent, we're trying to restart and we don't have much to to jump from if you're picturing a diving board. I mean, I guess you need to go way down to spring high. (laughs) Here's hoping because it is a big challenge and you have to prioritize and sometimes not everybody wins in this uh, space that we're in. I would say that definitely a barrier communication and making sure people know about it and that's one reason we're happy that we're linking up with sensory friendly solutions and other groups also downtown halifax a is not easy for parking and b is terrible for accessible parking and we know it (laughs) and the hills the hills are hard and another barrier that we have at neptune and most theaters in general is just sort of that for so long these spaces weren't welcoming to some people that it's hard to just to say and now it is you know to just shift that perspective and to shift everyone in-house's perspective it takes time and education and patience and mistakes things that people aren't always good at and ed- i mean education and communication is important to know things about like what people need or like how to make things more accessible to all what are some ways that neptune theater uses to really know what your audience needs to make things more inclusive how do you get all their feedback we do surveys and we do i know our general manager and our development manager and our um, artistic director so lisa is the general manager leslie is our uh, development and um, Jeremy Webb is our artistic director. They make a conscious effort when there's audiences here as much as possible to engage directly with audiences, especially on those special nights. Myself and Julia Topp will do that for our relaxed performances as well. And that's when we're talking directly to the people attending and engaging with them on their way in and out and literally asking the questions. Digital surveys are a thing. The phone lines, people call, call people email for sure. We were exploring with our relaxed performances different ways to try and get feedback, but we found that in general on the way out, people weren't interested. I find you generally really have to get them within the safety of their home. People just don't have the the real space in their time or their mind to do that on the way out of the theater in general, Uh, in my experience. We had this idea about dropping marbles and a, a cup with what you thought or something, but it just, again, now with COVID, you can't do that. The other thing we have had lots of conversations and sort of, I think we could do more about sort of digital, but round tables or reaching out. I know I've been to so many, you know, webinars or discussions within our, my community here. When I say community, I mean Halifax or Nova Scotia or Canada, just listening about some of these topics. But I think going forward, 
hopefully there will also be more like, like I think I alluded to before, community consultations and first voice discussions when we're making some of these decisions. I will admit, I know that this will be a slow process for us, but that's what I would hope and envision in the future. Can I jump in with a, a, a question, Laura? I'd love um, for you to describe a little bit about maybe your relaxed performances or the, the conversations and, and coffee with seniors, which I just brought a little tear to my eye. Just if you can describe some of the some of the changes that you, you sort of had to think about beforehand, uh, what sort of came to mind as to how to offer those engagements differently or what, you know, what did you think about beforehand? What did you actually change? And maybe what, you know, I, I, I suspect from the the ongoing engagement that you've described, uh, that there's an ongoing evolution of things you learn about and then sort of change the next time. I'd love to I'd love to hear more about just some of those very specific details. Totally. I mean, I'm just going to speak really quickly about small accommodations that we have made, like even just on our registrations. You know, we have our pronouns on registrations now. We have the space to put accommodations. And, you know, I think in, in general, we are allowing space for people to communicate that kind of thing. Whereas before it was assumed that you were quote unquote normal as you registered. So I, I mean, that's just a simple, simple shift in thinking. What can we do for you? How can we make this a barrier free experience is something that we're always trying to work on. But as far as relaxed performances or sensory friendly performances, I think within my first year here, uh, someone from Autism Nova Scotia, y- Yvonne came to me and said, you know, this is a thing that people are doing. Maybe you'd want to do it at Neptune. And I was like, oh, I didn't know it was a thing. I admit, I was, I didn't know. I went to the senior management team and they're like, yeah, great, go for it. And I realized, oh, me? Oh, okay, I'll do it then. Um, so I kind of inherited the role of sensory friendly relaxed performance producer here but I I say that with joy because I have really found it really interesting and so one thing that happened pretty quickly was Charlottetown Festival they hosted a relaxed performance training myself and Julia who's my assistant were there and we gained all this knowledge about creating a visual story creating a social story creating all the signage having extra staff making sure there was space between the seats so that you could get in and out We don't do applause at our relaxed performances. We do sort of jazz hands in the air, pre-show announcement, kind of telling people about things to expect, like a death or a loud noise or things like that. So they're ready for it. And there's more, but those things. And then I also got selected, and which was great, through application to go and do the access activator training. I did that. It was like the last cool thing I did before COVID-19 hit. And that was in Toronto. And it was hosted through the British Council and Tangled Arts, who do amazing work. So that was like 40 of us from across the country sitting around a room in Toronto together sharing lunch. That's why I say like before COVID-19 and not just lunch, having like big discussions and presentations about all of this accessibility in general, but with a focus on relaxed performance. And I got, I received so many resources, both like in the moment, but also just PDFs and links to files. And I'm still playing catch up from that. I admit, because as soon as like I got back, it was COVID-19 and everything kind of fell by the wayside. But anyway, to answer your question, those are sort of the, the things I learned about. So we've gotten really great at, at, at those visual stories and and we have members from Autism Nova Scotia come here. So the one thing we found is when you have a relaxed performance, you don't really want to go. So why are you here? <laughs> you know, uh, what, did you pick this night? And those kind of things. So, you know, we've used people on staff of Autism Nova Scotia to sort of assess approximately how many people were there for those shows specifically. I mean, I got some people have come to the relaxed performances and the actors. Obviously, they have to shift some of their performance a bit, tone back some screaming or loud moments. And anybody who goes into it is not who's not sure they come out and they're like, whoa, that was amazing and so cool. Because all of a sudden you're back to the authenticity, the the story, right? You don't, it's not the thunderous applause feeding your ego. All of a sudden you're like, it's about energy and presence. And it's really, really, really interesting. Finally, I will say I've enjoyed watching people at the theater who like, because of their way of functioning, get up and dance and scream during a fun number. And like, you're like, it's, you know, 
it's really it, it's kind of amazing that we're back to a space where that's okay or can be okay it's really kind of fun just really uh connecting the joy the joy of of theater thinking about your i specifically about your your uh i think i think it was coffee and conversations um that you do specifically for seniors and you said maybe seniors who used to this used to be a shared something that they would share right with a, a partner or or someone else um and maybe no longer able to do that uh, and this is a way to just bring people together again and share the joy uh is there anything with regards to that thinking of uh the older adults more mature adults anything that you've done differently to, to make the performance or what you do afterwards just more welcoming uh for them most of those people come to the sunday matinee so i think it's there's an inherent welcoming everybody, everyone from an usher to a bartender will know what that day will be. I have to share that like one thing I ended up doing last year, the Halifax Chamber hosted a, de- a dementia friendly training that ran for, I think, six to eight weeks, one hour every Wednesday. It was really interesting. And it was interesting to think it was all about what kind of signage to use and not use and how different floor surfaces and things can be confusing for people and strategies for dealing with someone who is, quote unquote, difficult, but maybe it's you know due to something you're not aware of. I need to go back to those notes and, and implement that a bit as because we're, we're just starting to program again here. So that was a really cool thing. If anyone else is thinking of doing a different dementia friendly training, but uh, I don't know if we have any specific strategies for that. I find an amazing link between relaxed performances and like, uh, like at the dementia friendly, they loved our visual stories. I shared that within that group and they thought this is exactly what you want to be sharing, not just to people who need it for, you know, accessibility um, or relaxed performances. Um, so a lot of it overlaps. <laughs> I also laugh that a lot of it overlaps with COVID-19. All of a sudden the idea of extra signage and clear communication is like, yeah, we all need it. And people from the accessibility world are like, that's all we've been asking for for years. <laughs> Um, the people who hear a lot from our senior audiences is box office. So I think that would be maybe one day you should talk to a box office attendant on your podcast, because that's the people who really engage with these folks, the people who don't use the internet, the people who don't follow us on Facebook. Box office is the one who I would think has the most one-on-one interaction with our more senior audience. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Lovely. I don't want to say tidbits but but not that just minimizes the just all of the strategies right of what you what you've learned and how you've learned to implement it and and iterate right and just keep making it um, things including more people always and understanding that there's you know just that overlap I think just that it it helps everyone you think you're helping uh, one person with maybe one overcome one type of barrier to enjoying theater but at the end of the day you're you're really helping many people here's hoping what advice would you give to other places with theater performances who want to start or even continue having more awareness on the sensory needs of the audience especially for adults 55 and over experience these kind of sensory changes it seem overwhelming off the top but the good thing is that you don't have to start from scratch because there's so many resources and there's so many different ways that people have been doing this stuff over the last well for many years some people for decades you know if you just get on your google machine for a couple hours you will find great ideas resources templates and you don't have it, you suddenly don't have to start from scratch or be an expert. But the main thing I've learned in all of this and all of the discussions about inclusivity, please, please consult with members of said community and not just organizations representing said community. Get those first voice experiences, do environmental audits with people from that group who are living that experience of your space of your shows put in that effort it will take a bit of time it will take a bit of money but unless you do that I it's not quite the same I came up with a slogan the other day I'm sure I'm not the first one to say it but I'm feeling these days like if transparency is not authentic you can see right through it 
And that's kind of ironic, right? You have to do these things from an authentic place and truly be trying to make it right for the in the people or it won't work. You'll get terrible feedback and and we'll make we will make mistakes. You will make mistakes, but create a space where it's everyone knows you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna learn from them, as opposed to trying to be like, I've got it all figured out and present press play or we don't that's not the way to do it it's important to conduct research to learn more but it's even more important to listen to the voices to go through and hear about their lived experience of what it's like the one thing and this is from someone who i mean i'm undiagnosed but i'm pretty sure i have adhd and i'm always going at like 100 million miles a minute all of this stuff takes so much time. And I don't mean even hours. I mean, taking an accessible experience where you have to greet people or get to greet people individually and get everyone to their seats safely. It takes time and patience, space to listen, to make these things happen. You have to allow the time and the sort of breathing space for it to happen which is for someone like me can be very hard oh lovely absolutely lovely as always laura thanks I, you too thank you for your exceptional generosity with us it evolves over time it'll be a really interesting journey i hope for next at least decade i think we can make some big changes which i'm very excited about thank you once again laura caswell Director of Education at Neptune Theatre for sharing your wealth of experience and knowledge, making the theatre space and performances enjoyed by audiences of all ages and in particular for older patrons. Please also listen to our audio conference episode with Sarah Nementella of Xenia Concerts about opening up music and concerts to audiences across the lifespan. You can find more resources about making tourist attractions, events, and locations sensory-friendly at sensoryfriendly.net. <laughs>